Why do we use NURBS curves and not, say, polygonal objects for controllers? So NURBS don't get rendered. So if you have a shot and then there are controllers on top of the mesh, you don't even need to hide them. You can just press the render button and only your mesh is going to get rendered. Any other ideas? Yeah, that's another good reason. They're easy to distinguish from the mesh. And another reason is if we have a specific node for controllers like NURBS curves, then we can write scripts that will access, for instance, all the NURBS curves in the scene and do something with them. Let's say delete them. So when we're uh, creating controllers, we can create them both in kind of 2D space and also 3D space. And the easiest way to create a controller is by creating a circle. You can access it through create NURBS primitives and then the circle is going to be here. And this can already be used as a controller, but we can also uh, do it in a different way. So we can draw that controller with a single NURBS curve. So under create, under curve tools, you will see here CV curve tool. Uh, so here we can choose the degree of curve. Linear will just create straight linear interpolation between points. And now we can draw anything here Specifically, we can snap by holding X, we can snap to the grid. Now I press Q to get out of the curve drawing mode and we get this kind of controller. Now, if we want, we can go to modify center pivot to get the pivot in the center of the square. And we can do that with more complex shapes as well. We can, for instance, create a polygon cube. And now I can go to curve tools, CV curve tool, and I'm going to snap them by holding V. And there we go. So now I've created this curve over here, which is the cube, and I can now delete the mesh of the cube. Now it's a good idea to change the color of our controllers. The convention uh, usually in the rigs is to have the controllers on the right to be red, controllers on the left to be blue, and controllers in the center to be yellow. And that's just a good way to give an animator an idea of which side they're dealing with. So in order to change the color of our controller, the important thing to remember is to change the color of the shape, not the color of the controller itself. We can the same way go to attribute editor, go to object display, drawing overrides, enable overrides, and then change the color. Let's say something like this. All right, so important things about a controller is that it should be a single object, as we talked about earlier. Uh, the controller also shouldn't have any history. Uh, so a controller should be as light as possible. You also, we also don't want controllers to have any values. And we discussed that mesh shouldn't have any values because then if animator wants to zero it out, they won't be able to do that. So the same thing goes for controllers. Controllers shouldn't have any values on them. So we can freeze the transformation and we can change the color in the uh, attribute editor. Now, attributes on our controllers oftentimes are useful, but other times we have attributes that animator is not even supposed to use. In that case, we can right-click those attributes and choose lock and hide selected. There are separate options here. So we can go to lock selected. So you see it will be grayed out and we can't really change it. We can also go ahead, let's say we want to hide all the rotation attributes. So you can go right-click hide selected. And we can also do both of those things. Go, let's say here, go lock and hide selected. Now, my question is, why did we do lock and hide selected? Why can't we just hide selected attribute? So if right now I press E on my keyboard, I can still access the rotation, even though the rotation attributes are hidden. Another option we have with attributes is for muting them. Uh, that's more important for animators, but it's still uh, good for us to know. So for muting, you can just uh, right click and you choose mute selected. And what that means, so we won't be able to see the animation on that attribute. So let's say we have a keyframe here, a keyframe here. So now the controller moves 
and then but now if we go mute selected we won't see the controller uh, move even though this attribute is working it's keyable but it's just muted so we can go unmute selected and now it's moving again uh, we can also add our custom attribute to the controller so uh, you might have seen in rigs uh, oftentimes there will be controller and let's say we can turn on stretchiness on or off or let's say there's an eyelid close or open. So things like that are just custom attributes that the user creates. So now uh, if I hold control and right click, it will give me a separate menu uh, from the one we saw before. And in here, we can choose add attribute. You will see there is an option for long name and there will also be an option to overwrite nice name. Let's say we create test attribute. If we create it in the channel box, it will be shown as this test attribute. If we don't want it to be shown like this, we can choose the way that is being shown in the attribute. And that way, this will be this attribute's real name, but this will be the way this attribute is being displayed to whoever is using the rig. Uh, we can choose uh, to make this attribute keyable, displayable, or hidden. And uh, data type is uh, what kind of data can we input into that attribute. Okay, so float is probably the most common. So let's call it float attribute. Uh, we can choose a minimum and the maximum. Let's say minimum will be zero and maximum will be five. So you can press add and you can see it created the attribute called float attribute. And we can go from zero to five and we can choose all the decimal points as well. Now, if we choose an integer, let's call it int adder. And we also go from zero to five. You can see that now we can't go in between say zero and one. We can only go zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, Boolean, I'll call it bool adder. So now we can't specify anything because Boolean can be only true or false. Out of these default attributes, which one can you see that is a Boolean? Exactly. Visibility can be either on or off. So it's a Boolean. So if we create a Boolean here, you can see by default it will be off and we can turn it to on. Now with an enum, let's call it enum adder. We can use, so in this case, it gives us an example of green and blue. We can make these uh, named anything uh, we want. Let's say we have different clothes that we can pick for a character from a drop down menu. So we can have one of them be called a hat or this one evening clothes. Now we can add another one here too. If we select this empty space, let's say day clothes, uh, and we can enter uh, however many of these options that we want. So once we're ready, we can press add. Uh, and here we can change this attribute to be kind of the clothes type of our choosing. Now we also have a string and the string is an interesting case because even if we make it keyable, let's create string add, you will see as we add it, it doesn't get displayed in this uh, channel box. However, if we go to attribute editor, I want to be in the square. There it is. Extra attributes there. So there's our string attribute and we can insert any kind of characters. If we can't access the string from our channel box, what do you guys think is the reason for us to have this type of attribute? So it's for the program uh, to be able to access this data or to add to this data. Let's say if a modeler creates a piece of model and then it's the final version, then maybe they have a string attribute here where they put final. And then our script gets this attribute and it sees, okay, if there is final in there, then we publish it. Okay, and then vector, vector. So it will just create three attributes called vector adder. So it will be just X, Y, and Z. So if we were to add them, you can see three of these and they're all uh, float values.